What's going on guys, it's ETA Prime back here again. Today I am super excited because I finally got my hands on the world's most powerful maker board, the Udo Bolt. Now this is an amazing little board here. It's powered by an AMD Ryzen embedded V1605B. Base clock of two gigahertz, boost of 3.6, four cores, eight threads, with built-in Vega 8 graphics. So it's a smaller Ryzen APU powering this unit. And from the testing I've already performed, this tiny board packs a big punch. I have a lot of videos planned for the Udo Bolt, so definitely stay tuned to the channel. But in this video, we're going to go over the hardware, pricing, accessories. Then I'm going to get into Windows 10 Pro. We're going to run some benchmarks and test some gaming on this tiny board. So here's a little size comparison. On the far left, we have the new Raspberry Pi 4. Then the Udo Bolt. Next up, the mini STX board from the ASRock A300 mini PC. And finally, a mini ITX board. So you can see that this Udo Bolt is really small. It actually measures in at 4.72 inches by 4.72 inches. Udo offers two versions of the board, the V8 and the V3. The V8 is obviously going to be the most powerful version. We have the embedded V1605B, quad core, eight thread, base clock of 2 GHz, boost of 3.6, with built-in Radeon Vega 8 graphics. And then we have the V3 with the embedded V1202B. It's a dual-core, four-thread, base of 2.3 GHz, boost of 3.2, with built-in Radeon Vega 3 graphics. No matter which version you choose, you will have to add RAM. It's so dim, DDR4 at 2400 MHz, so it'll accept up to 32 GB and they only come pre-installed with 32 gigabytes of storage. If you want more, you'll have to add an M.2 or a 2.5 inch SATA drive. As a lot of you might have already guessed, pricing doesn't come cheap, so get ready for it. 418 for the V8, 332 for the V3. You'll also have to add RAM, so that's gonna bring the price up. Just a heads up, you can build a super small form factor mini ITX with the new Ryzen 3200G with 16 gigabytes of RAM, 500 gigabytes of storage, with better gaming performance than the Udo Bolt's gonna put out for around $426. I just did a full build on it. I'll leave a link to that video in the description. But the Udo Bolt is mainly aimed at makers. So we get two UR ports, two I2C interfaces, one SPI interface, one keyboard scan interface, a built-in at Mega 32U4 module. This board is Arduino compatible, 12 analog IO pins, up to 23 digital IO pins, and up to 10 regular GPIO pins right off the side. I know for a fact that I'm gonna miss some stuff listing these specs here, so I'm gonna leave a link to the full spec sheet over on Udo's website. But I'm personally here because I want to see how this Ryzen embedded APU performs. Believe it or not, this is one of the cheapest Ryzen embedded systems that you can buy with the V1605B. A lot of the other ones retail for around $600 to $700. So like I mentioned, I'm going to be working with the Udo Bolt V8. We have that Ryzen embedded V1605B with built-in Radeon Vega graphics, 4 cores, 8 threads, base clock 2 GHz, max clock 3.6. This APU does contain the Radeon Vega 8 GPU just like the 2200G or the 3200G, but it's an underclocked version and there's no way to overclock it. In fact, the max clock on this one is 1100 MHz, but I've only seen it go up as high as 700 MHz in gaming. I got my fingers crossed for a BIOS update that'll allow us to overclock this APU, but for now we're kind of going to be stuck. It's hovering between 400 and 630 megahertz in gaming. The chip does have a configurable TDP of 12 watts to 25, and I have mine set to 25 for all the testing you're going to see in this video. There's something else hindering the GPU performance on this board also. The RAM. We can only go up to 2400 megahertz, and these Ryzen APUs love fast RAM. I've actually seen up to 20% increase in gaming performance from going to 3200 megahertz RAM from 2400 megahertz. So if we could overclock that RAM, it would make a big difference. But unfortunately, there's no option in the BIOS, and this chip is not compatible with Ryzen Master. The board also has two HDMI 2.0 A ports, two USB Type-C ports on the rear, and these can be used for display out, so we have a total of four displays out on this board. Two USB 3.0 ports, one gigabit Ethernet port, built-in 32 gigabyte eMMC 5.0, a total of three M.2 slots, one key B, one key M, and one key E. The key E slot's gonna be for a Wi-Fi or Bluetooth module. The key B slot only runs at PCI X2, but the key M slot does run at PCI X4. It's Gen 3, and we can add an external GPU to this thing. And I will have a video coming out in the next few days on that. 
One SATA 3 6 GB standard connector for a 2.5 inch or 3.5 inch mechanical drive or SSD, and a single 3.5 mm audio jack for a mic or headphones. So the UDU Bolt is packed with features. I'm sure there's some stuff I missed. Like I mentioned, I will leave a link in the description to UDU's website so you can check out the full specs. Moving over to the accessories, I was able to pretty much get everything that's available right now for the UDU Bolt. I have the SATA kit, it's just SATA power, SATA data cable, an M.2 Intel Bluetooth Wi-Fi module, the power adapter, 65 watts max, 19 volts, 3.1 amps. And finally, the Bolt case. It does come with a power button. All the ports are accessible, even the GPIO. It's not aluminum. It's actually made out of sheet metal, and it kind of sits up off the desk. I just think it's a really slick looking case. So now it's time to get into some testing. But before I do that, I need to add RAM and storage. I mean, we only have 32 gigabytes of onboard and I wanna install Windows 10 for this video. So I'm gonna be adding a 128 gigabyte Transcend M.2 SSD. It's not the fastest in the world, but it'll definitely get us by. And for the RAM, I'm gonna go with eight gigabytes of DDR4, 2400 megahertz. This is ballistic RAM. And like I said, you just can't overclock it in the bio. So we're gonna be stuck at that 2400 megahertz mark. All right, so here it is, Windows 10 Pro 64-bit running on the UDU Bolt V8. I did run into one issue when I first booted this up. My idle temps were sitting around 68 to 71 degrees Celsius. I knew something was up, so I shut everything down and I pulled the heatsink off of the board. The pre-applied thermal paste that came from the factory was like concrete. It was just so dry. It took me about 15 minutes to get it off the CPU and the heatsink safely, and then I applied some Noctua NTH1, and now my thermals are great. So it's just something to look out for if you pick up a UDU bolt and you got high temps straight out of the box. Just replace that thermal paste and you'll be good to go. So about that GPU clock, I have Afterburner running here, and the highest I've seen it go up to right now is about 560. On the spec sheet, this Vega 8 should do 1100 megahertz, and in GPU-Z, it does say that the max clock is 1100 megahertz, but we're only sitting around 450 to 550 megahertz in this benchmark, and it's even lower in GTA. Even if I go in and I up all the settings to extreme in 1080p, I can only hit around 630 to 650 megahertz on that, so hopefully that's fixed down the road. Really not sure what's going on. I've looked all over the BIOS for settings, but I can't find anything. But those issues aside, this board is still a beast for its size. I've gone in and run some of my favorite benchmarks. I've also tested out some PC gaming, some emulation, and I've also recorded all the thermals and total system power draw from the wall. So let's go ahead and get into it. The first benchmark is Geekbench 4 on the UDU Bolt V8, single core, 3987, multi, 10739. I've also thrown in some other Ryzen chip benchmarks that I've run recently so we can get a little comparison here. The results here are really impressive. Now we do have four cores and eight threads, so that really helps out with the multi-core, but this thing is really close to the 2200G in raw CPU performance. Next up, Cinebench R15, the UDU Bolt, scored a 503, but without those extra threads, it would have been really low on the scale. For instance, the 2200G scored a 566 with only four cores and no extra threads to help out. And finally, a quick blender render test. Now this really shows you that the higher clocks on the more powerful Ryzen CPUs really help out. The UDU Bolt finished the BMW test in four minutes and one second. This is with four cores and four threads and it really helps out with blender. The 2200G did it in three minutes and 29 seconds with just four cores. I tested a lot of games on the UDU Bolt V8. This is GTA 5, 1080p, normal settings. We're getting an average of 33, and the 3200G got an average of 56. In my testing, the UDU Bolt isn't great for 1080p gaming with newer games, but going down to 720p actually gives us some decent results. Average of 46 FPS. And as you can see, the GPU is kind of all over the place, from 300 to 450 megahertz. Hopefully this is fixed with the BIOS update in the future. Project Cars 2, 720p, low settings, an average of 40 FPS. Here's the original Skyrim, 1080p, medium settings. I do notice a couple dips here and there to 58, but overall performance is great on the UDU Bolt. Here's Doom, 720p, low settings, using the Vulcan back end, average of 43 FPS. I 
I tested more games at 1080p and 720p. You're kind of going to be stuck at 720p low settings if you want to get decent frame rates out of most of this stuff. I'm sure a lot of people are going to want to know how well this does emulation, and I will have a full video coming up, but I just wanted to give you a little test here. This is the Dolphin emulator running Auto Modalista, one of the harder games to run in my opinion. It works fine at 60 FPS and upscaled to 1080p. Next up we have some PSP emulation using PPSSPP, this is God of War Chains of Olympus at 4x. And finally, some Dreamcast. This is the ReDream emulator running Dead or Alive 2 over 1080p. If you're interested in seeing other emulators running on this board, definitely stay tuned to the channel because I have a dedicated video coming up, but I just want to tell you right now, this isn't going to run RPCS3 at full speed or SimU. I also tested the total system power consumption from the wall. I'm using a kilowatt meter. At idle, 11.2 watts, web browsing, 19.7, 720p gaming, 36.2, and in my extreme test, which consists of running Prime 95 and 3D Mark Time Spy at the same time, 48.6 watts. Temps on this little APU are great. My ambient room temperature is 23.3333 degrees Celsius or 74 degrees Fahrenheit. At idle, it's sitting at 37 degrees Celsius. Web browsing, 47. After 20 minutes of 720p gaming, it was sitting at 66 degrees Celsius. And my extreme test, I ran this for 30 minutes straight, 73 degrees Celsius. But remember, I did swap out the thermal paste. So far, I'm really impressed with the performance of the Udo Bolt given its form factor and power consumption. Now, pricing is definitely an issue because you can get out cheaper building a more powerful system that's just a bit bigger. But you got to keep in mind that these Ryzen embedded CPUs are actually really expensive if you're buying them directly from AMD. And Udo is a relatively small company, so they can't just mass produce a million of these and get the price way down on them. But nonetheless, this is an awesome little piece of kit, and I'm really enjoying using it. I will have more videos coming up. I want to run Linux on here. I'm going to test out some more emulation. If there's anything else you want to see running on here, or if you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. There's still a few settings that I want to mess around with in the BIOS and inside of Windows. If I get any better performance out of gaming or I can get that GPU to clock a little higher, I will let you guys know. I'm going to leave links to Udo's website in the description. They have full documentation over there in case there's something you wanted to know about the Bolt that I didn't cover in this video. So that's it for this one, guys. I really appreciate you watching. It'd be really cool if you could hit that like button. Maybe subscribe to the channel if you want to stay up to date with things like this. But like always, thanks for watching.